I've teamed up with a group of awesome DevOps experts to bring you the biggest mistakes we've made when starting our careers in DevOps. All of us has tips for you so you will not make the same mistakes. Hi everybody and welcome back to Coded Dave. I'm super excited about today's video. I've got a really great group of people and all of us have come up with the biggest mistake we've made when starting our careers in DevOps. If you're new to this channel, my name is Davide, aka Coder Dave, and here I talk about DevOps, especially with Azure DevOps and GitHub. If this is something you're interested in, make sure to subscribe right now. Just click on the subscribe button below and turn on the notifications so you will not miss any new video. Right, on to today's video. I've asked each one of the DevOps experts you're gonna see in the video for two of the biggest mistakes they made when starting doing DevOps. And don't be afraid making mistakes. What you do and how you do it is gonna be constantly evolving. But making this video, we hope that we can help you not making the same mistakes we made when starting. You will find all the links to this expert's profile and channel in the description below. Make sure to check them out after you finish watching this video. All right, let's get into some of the biggest mistakes we made and the first one is from Etienne. Hey everyone, my name is Etienne Tremblay. I'm an Azure DevOps MVP, as well as uh, the founder of Tegel Solutions, a small firm that's, that does training, consultancy, and migration of Azure DevOps into the cloud. So Davide asked me to talk to you about two things that tripped me up when I started doing Azure DevOps uh, in my career. So the first thing was um, basically I was rushing into uh, telling the customer what to do. So um, the first thing is there's multiple different processes, Agile, Scrum, uh, Waterfall, anything in between all these things. So it's important to sit down with the customer, understand what their process is, and basically run some things like uh, value stream mapping and seeing where the bottlenecks are and where you can improve on their process. So don't rush into telling them which process to use, basically just uh, use the, the knowledge that you have and try to tweak their process so that it's a little bit better. The second thing that we can talk about is uh, pipelines, so DevOps pipelines. What I used to do was uh, bring a lot of the knowledge that I had from other customers and, and basically bring a lot of things into the pipeline. And what's important is to keep it simple. So don't, don't basically over-engineer your pipeline. Uh, do an MVP, so a minimum viable product. Basically compile, package, deploy into various environments and make sure that uh, basically all this works before you bring in some, some very uh, high level security checks and things like that. So it's important to keep it simple. And when you have everything you know, under control, then you can start adding new things to, this, to, to the processes. So I hope you found that useful. I wish you luck in your own DevOps journey and thank you for listening. Etienne said something very important. You really have to understand the needs of your company or your clients and only then you can make them start embracing DevOps. And you need to keep it simple and grow as it goes. Now let's check Mohamed's biggest mistakes he's made when starting his DevOps career. Hello everyone. My name is Mohamed Radwan. I'm a Microsoft MVP and principal DevOps consultant in the UK, London based. I have been doing software quality and improvement for more than 17 years now helping more than 50 enterprise customers around the globe to improve their software delivery and DevOps, some of them from the Fortune 500. So two mistakes when I started this career. I think the first one is not considering the metrics to measure the performance of the adoption of the DevOps. Something like DORA or DevOps Research and Assessment Status Report, where it shows many of the important metrics to, to measure the performance. Another one is we all talk about the importance of the culture when it comes to implement DevOps, but the absence of giving that the importance enough. For example, focus more on the technical aspect more than the cultural part. All the time thinking how to solve the problem from the technical aspect while it should be from the cultural part. Thanks, Mohammed. I want to follow up on his first mistake to tell you one I made. He said he wasn't considering the metrics enough. Well, what I did was quite the opposite. In fact, I was trying to measure everything and anything that came into my mind. And as you can imagine, this is bad as well. Doing so, in fact, you end up having a ton of data, so much that it's very difficult, if not impossible, extracting any valuable information from that. You're just overwhelmed. So my advice here would be try to measure only things that make sense to you and provide value. 
And there's no predefined list of that. It really depends on what you consider important. For example, I don't think it's important for my scenarios um, measuring the number of line of code developer and developer teams write. But I know that some other people consider that important. Start small with only the metrics that make sense to you, make them part of your evaluation process and feedback loop, and then if necessary, and only if necessary, add the new ones. All right, so next one is Jamaria. He's got a few tips for you that are gonna be very helpful for your DevOps career. Hi, my name is Jamaria, and I'm working as a consultant in Italy on .NET technology and Azure DevOps and DevOps in general. And what I want to do this morning is telling you about a couple of common errors that can happen when you try to adopt DevOps. And these two errors are errors that I personally did in the past. The first error is probably the most common one. It's when you focus on tool instead of your process. As a typical example, most people focus on release pipeline. They build a perfect release pipeline. They can release with a button but they lose control of the entire process and they miss a correct management of requirement and the backlog, a correct way to incorporate end user feedback, a good way of handling your source code and keeping your source code clean. And that's the most common error because people quite often made the mistake of identifying DevOps with tools. And remember, it's not. DevOps is a process. So you should always start looking at the process from the start, idea to end, release. And then when your process is good, you can start focusing on the tool to get the maximum output from your process. It is fun because the second typical error is the opposite of the first. And I've told you that process is important and the second error is focusing too much on the process. You start trying to involve everyone in the organization in drawing how the process should be. So you start so much obsessing yourself to get the process right at the first tentative that you spent an insane amount of time without actually validating your idea. Remember, DevOps is an interactive approach. It's lean, it's agile. And the right way to approach your process is look down to your organization, try to sketch a first approach to the problem. So sketch how you like the process to be and immediately try to implement on a prototype project so you can start validating your process and you can start getting feedback about that process. Those feedback are used to improve the process itself. So you can start with uh, something that is not perfect and you optimize through time until you have a perfect process that fits your organization and is made by incorporating the feedback of everyone. And that's the right way to find the optimal process, the optimal DevOps process for your organization. Once again, John brought up a very important point. Don't focus too much on the tools, but start working on processes and culture, especially because culture is the most important yet difficult part to take care of when it comes to DevOps. So final mistake you should avoid and that instead I made is thinking that mastering one single aspect, like for example, Agile or SUS control or CICD, is enough for being successful at DevOps. Spoiler alert, it is not. You need to keep learning and keep getting better at everything. And as we said before, remember that DevOps is not only about tools, so you need to get better at the cultural aspects and also at managing and creating processes. And of course, I know that no one can be a guru in every single aspect, but you need to develop a good understanding at least in every area. When I've started my DevOps career, I was really good at managing source control and also at information sharing. So I thought I could be successful in doing DevOps, but I had to learn the hard way that was not the case. And in fact, I had to go back and quickly improve myself in the other areas where I was not that proficient. So don't be like me, now you know it, try to get better in every other areas before it's too late. All right. I really hope you found all these tips valuable and hopefully we could save you from making the same mistakes we made when starting our DevOps career. 
Remember to check in the video description the link of all the profiles and channels of the DevOps expert you've seen in this video because they are really awesome people. Last thing, let me know in the comment section below what your mistakes were when you started your career. In the video description below, description is enough for being successful, successful. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. Hit the like button below, subscribe if you haven't already, and I see you in the next video here at Coder Dave.